Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. Work programs are underway in Finland and Canada. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol ADD, on Frankfurt symbol 82A1, and the OTCQB symbol ASDZF. Please visit our website arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca. He invented the Inc. Canadian Insider Index, which is used by the Horizons Canada Insider Index ETF, a 2017 Fund Data Fund Grade A Plus award winner. His website, CanadianInsider.com. Welcome back to the show, Ted. Well, thanks for having me back, Jim. Are gold stocks picking up? What kind of action is taking place there? Well, we put out a, a piece on CanadianInsider.com, which is also a report we circulated to our Inc. subscribers. The piece is called, Will It Take a Fed Accident to Boost Gold? It's a blog post. Anybody can take a look at it. Really, what we found right now was that insiders are pretty bullish on the gold area. Now, we had a nice uptick in the gold stocks uh, in early October. They kind of pulled back a bit here. But why might the insiders be excited about the gold area right now where there's not a lot of other participants in the market who are that, you know, taking a shine to the to gold? Well, we found that when you look over history, what happens in general, investors start to buy gold and gold stocks when the Fed is actually in tightening mode. And as it gets through the tightening mode, what I mean by tightening mode, raising interest rates, why would people be buying gold during that period? Well, and I think this is mostly relevant towards the end of that period after they've been raising rates for a long time. Investors start to anticipate that the Fed's going to have to backtrack to change course, to go looser. So, you know, savvy investors like to get in front of that. They like to anticipate that. So what we found was that insiders have been buying here in the gold area. They seem to be signaling, Jim, that the Fed is about to change course. Yes, they're tightening. Yes, they're, they've raised rates. They're probably going to raise rates. But sooner rather than later, they're probably going to have to stop. And that's what and that's what insiders are uh, are are looking at and and our view is that the Fed will either stop by one of two ways they will get out in front of it and when I mean out in front of it they'll 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 be proactive and say okay we've done enough or they'll keep tightening and keep raising rates until something breaks or crashes like the stock market so we're going to have to see what uh, what's going on uh, in the Fed's uh, uh, modus operandi here and. That's the key question, I think, though, for investors is, will the Fed telegraph what it's going to do on rates? And so far, the answer on that isn't looking very promising. So uh, we may be in for a little bit more volatility here going forward over the next uh, the next few weeks and months, Jim. Didn't President Trump say the biggest threat he faces is the U.S. Fed? Well, I, I've also heard him say that he loves that. So I think it really depends on uh, maybe what channel he's talking on. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But uh, certainly his uh, national security advisor has realized that, that, that that is a big deal. But, you know, the debt is growing in the background This is a long-term problem that's going to have to be dealt with. And it's been a long-term problem for a long time. So the fact of the matter is it's becoming less of a long-term problem and more of a medium-term and short-term problem. For the markets right now, the issue is going to be the Fed. And why that is is because the interest rates, of course, are so important in in the pricing of of, uh, asset values. As interest rates go up, generally most asset prices go down because assets 
are valued off of the cash flow that they generate or expected cash flow. Uh, and that value is determined by the interest rates. Okay. So, Jim, what we have to look at here is what is Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, going to do in terms of telling the market when he's going to stop raising, uh, stop raising rates. And we got a bit of an answer yesterday when he was in Dallas and we, uh, we posted the link uh, in another blog that post that we put, uh, starting to a lot, a lot like Christmas is the Fed about to blink. And that's also on Canadian insider.com. There's a, there's a link to, to Jerome Powell's latest Q and A. And he had a, ra- a rather surprising admission, I think, that, that uh, came out in that, uh, in that inter, in that discussion that he had with the Dallas Fed president. And it was, boy, it was a 180 degree different direction than we've been used to under Janet Yellen. And what that major change is, is it basically where Janet Yellen was, would lead the market by the, by the hand and say, oh, we're only going to raise every quarter, or no, we're not going to raise, or rates are going to stay low for a long, long time. And then she said, well, now they're only going to stay low for a long time. So you kind of got the idea, oh, well, maybe, you know, that there's only going to be a couple of years left. Jay Powell, Jerome Powell, is taking the opposite approach. He has said that he is going to basically look to the market to tell him when interest rate should, you know, when their policy path uh, should be changed and, you know, when they should stop raising rates. So this is a 180 degree difference from the Janet Yellen Fed. And I'm not sure that investors fully appreciate that. I think they're starting to get, they're starting to get used to it. And that's why we're seeing a lot of volatility in the, in the stock market that we're not used to. This is a much different Fed. You know, I, I would kind of categorize this Fed as uh, a backwards, uh, uh, backwards guidance Fed uh, compared to the Yellen Fed that was a uh, forward guidance Fed. Completely, completely different operational styles here, Jim, and markets are still getting used to it. So, in other words, uh, everything has to come off the tracks, smash into the river bank, and fall into the river before the Fed does anything. Well, I certainly think if that happened, they would do something. I, I think the Fed's hope is that they will see signs in the market that the market will be gentle and say, "Oh, oh, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Powell. Maybe you're tightening a little too much. Maybe you should consider not tightening, or, or, or maybe we're maybe the the stock market. You know, maybe maybe Mr. Market will drop another two percent. I don't think that's the way it's going to play out, I, I, but that seems to be what the Fed is hoping for that they will be able to. Subtly, uh, the pick up subtleties in the market. Now, you know, maybe they'll be able to do that and maybe that's enough for market, uh, investors, uh, market participants. Maybe they, they have enough confidence in the Fed that the Fed will be able to pick up every, uh, little subtle signs and then make its decision to stop, uh, hiking rates. Uh, however, I'm skeptical of that, but we will see. You know, maybe, uh, maybe that's, uh, maybe they have kind of hit the ball down the fairway here, and maybe that's what the markets want to hear. Maybe the markets want to really uh, be in charge, and 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 that's fine. And if they're in charge, but the problem with that is, if the stock market goes up a lot, the Fed is just going to be emboldened to tighten even more, and that's going to put even further downward pressure on asset prices. So. Let's just say we have the makings of a pretty unstable situation going forward in the next uh, few uh, weeks, if not months. Well, what makes this Fed different than any other? Because as Bob Hoy has pointed out, since the U.S. Federal Reserve was invented, there's been 19 recessions. 19 recessions, the original Federal Reserve Bank said it would prevent. Why would these be any different? Why would this bank be different? Exactly. And... The, the, the Fed chairman opened up his comments yesterday saying, well, you know, the objective of the Fed is to prolong the recession. Uh, sorry, excuse me, to prolong the, to prolong the uh, recovery. Well, of course, that's the objective. The, the problem is that the track record of Federal Reserve and central banks in doing that is not particularly good. So, uh, of course, their their intentions are are, are 
are are good, but their ability to deliver on those intentions and those plans is something completely different. So this is, a, a, I think, a very important turning point in terms of re- uh, policy direction for the Fed. It's it's you know uh, now looking for backwards guidance. It's looking at it, you know it wants to be guided by the, the market. Uh, this is completely different than what we had had under uh, Yellen and Bernanke. Completely different. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol ABN and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern B.C. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Vatic Ventures Corp. is a potash exploration company focused on the Korat Basin in Thailand, the world's largest undeveloped potash resource. Vatic's management has extensive potash exploration and development experience in Thailand. Vatic will have marketing advantage compared to Western producers. Drill program commences this spring. Vatic trades on the TSX Venture, symbol VCV, and on Frankfurt, symbol V8V2. Visit our website, vaticventures.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, so much uh, negative news about oil lately. It's it's dropping. What are the insiders saying about the crude oil market, especially with the very low price Can- Canadians are getting for their oil? Jim, that's a fantastic question because it's on everybody's mind, minds right now. And to be honest with you, we've been quite uh, quite surprised at the modest reaction of insiders to the drop in, in oil stocks and oil prices. When I mean modest, I mean it, modest in terms of their buying. We would have expected to see a, a lot more buying by insiders given how prices have come off. But, uh, you know, they, they, they're at healthy levels in terms of the buying. Insiders are still saying there's value in the uh, C- Canadian oil patch right now and in, in the U.S. oil patch. Well, actually more, more so in the Canadian oil patch, but the problem is, is that it's not, it's not stand, stand out on the corner, you know, shout, uh, shout at the top of your lungs, uh, this is a screaming buy. Uh, this is a, a, this is a, an industry that, uh, you know, will survive and, and will, you know, eventually generate a lot of cash flow for those companies that have the management that are able to navigate it. But uh, I think that there's a, a, a huge dose of, um, of I, I guess, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say pessimism, but uh, just uh, acceptance of the fact that this is going to take a long time to work out. Now, I don't want to be overly gloomy in that, you know, at some point you're going to have a capitulation. I don't think we're there yet. That's why I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to sound like it's all doom and gloom. You know, I think... Uh, in terms of the um, in terms of the, the Canadian oil patch, there are a number of there are a number of companies and a number of stocks that will do very well and and are doing all right uh, despite the challenges they are, that are trading at decent uh, levels in terms of their uh, valuations. But uh, uh, boy, there you know the, there's so many factors beyond the control of management these days. That uh, you know, they, it, it it really is a tough slogging for them. Now, then, of course, you do have companies that have managements that make moves. They leave you scratching their head, your head, saying, "Why are you doing that?" And, and so, managements can make things worse. So, it's important in this market, I think, to really be uh, in the oil patch, be stock uh, specific, and and you know, look look at stock selection. And, and when you're doing stock selection. You're doing management selection, and in terms of investing in the oil patch, you want to go where there's good insider commitment, and those insiders that that are that have the commitment to the firm, you want to make sure they've got a good track record through thick and thin of being able to deliver value, not just build empires. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. 
Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp is a Canadian-based mineral exploration project generator. The company currently holds multiple property interests in Ontario with joint venture partners and is seeking further joint venture partners for other drill-ready properties in our portfolio. For more information, please visit our website at rmroyalty.com or call me at 604-922-2030. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, U.S. financials, are they hot or not? Uh, the U.S. financials, I think, are one of the areas that will lead the market higher once this once the bottom is in, now I don't want to say that the bottom is in because based on what I heard from the, the Fed chairman last night, uh, I'm skeptical that we have put in a, a firm floor here. But uh, if there is going to be a rally here into either year end or in the new year, you're going to have to see the financials uh, lead the way. It's hard to imagine a major uh, stock market rally without participation of the backbone of the financial system. So we're encouraged that eventually the U.S. financials will be the place to be. The time is coming close. Whether it's there or not now is the question. Uh, insiders have been buying very heavily in that group, both in the banks and in the REITs. So it's interesting that it's kind of a, both a defensive and a more of an offensive approach there with the REITs being more defensive. So, you know, we're keeping a close eye on that. Uh, I think had Powell been a little bit more dovish, if the Fed had backtracked on, the, on, on its intention of raising rates so firmly, you would have seen the financials, you'd see the financials really fly. And, you know, if we get a few Fed governors, a uh, uh, Fed speakers out the next week or so, downplaying the possibility of future rate hikes in the new year, you could still see the financials uh, charge ahead. So keep a close eye on uh, the, uh, the financials in the U.S. There's an ETF, the XLF, which is you know, has all the big, big name financials in the U.S. Uh, keep a close eye on that. And, Jim, I'd just like to come back to your question about energy in Canada. Uh, we did do the uh, in Canadian Center Index rebalancing a release on last Friday, and we're doing the rebalancing on Friday of this week. The energy stocks, uh, we saw some energy stocks leave the, will be leaving the index, and they were uh, more than replaced by gold stocks. Gold stocks are coming into the index. They're going to make up a 10% weighting in the index. That's the, the biggest that they've had since the uh, uh, index went live in 2014. So uh, that kind of reinforces our story here that insiders are starting to get pretty high conviction that the Fed is nearly done raising rates. The question is, like you posed a little bit earlier, is it going to take a, some kind of a crash or smash up uh, to make them stop, or will they uh, subtly, uh, you know, see the subtle uh, changes in the market and, and and proactively get in front of it? So, uh, but the gold insiders are definitely uh, uh, have a high high conviction that the time is getting close. If we're not, if not this year, or likely early next year. Ontario uh, just came out and announced that. Their deficit this year would be $14.5 billion. Is that more than the federal government has? Well, I was going to ask you that question. It, uh, it's almost uh, it's almost the same as the federal government, isn't it? Now, now uh, I think a lot of that must be due to some of the decisions that were made by the previous government. I'm, I'm not, you know, I haven't read the budget or the, the so I, I, I can't really say, but it's really. Uh, it's really a disturbing number, and uh, you know Ontario is so important to the Canadian economy. It's uh, it's it's just it's very concerning. I just hope that uh, the new government is able to um, bring in the reforms that are needed to invigorate the economy even more. I mean, the Ontario economy is pretty pretty robust. It's pretty strong, pretty diversified. But it's be, the government's just labeling with so much, uh, so much IOUs, Jim, that, uh, 
it, you know, it's like, uh, you know, they, people are being handcuffed here for going to work every day and doing their job. You know, governments really have to back off. And uh, it's uh, Ontario, you know, I think we'll get there. I think they've got the right, the right the group in place. And it is, it is, it is hilarious to see some of the, uh, see the former premier um, uh, sort of uh, bemoaning what's going on. Well, you know, I'm sorry, but we had to deal with uh, with Kathleen Wynne for uh, for the, over a decade, I believe. So it, it certainly seems like two decades that uh, the, the, she was uh, running the show in Ontario. So we had to put up with that pain. Uh, I think uh, you know, fair is fair. Well, Doug Ford says he was able to trim that debt by five hundred million dollars in just a few months. So does he really, you know, will he have the tools available to get Ontario's economy going to the point where they can pay off this stuff? And I thought Ontario had a strong economy. How can they run such a deep debt? Well, by spending too much money and by, you know, they've got lots and lots of uh, government programs. And, you know, uh, I just, uh, I just had the, I've lived in Toronto and, and uh, when I started the, uh, my my banking uh, when when I was in the banking industry, I started in Toronto, and I tell you, even back then, the local government was a huge monstrosity, and I just have to laugh at these local politicians who were running around and and having these uh, having these hissy fits over the, the Ford plan to uh, slim down uh, some of these big huge municipal bureaucracies. You know, uh, and these municipal politicians are so out of touch that, uh, you know, they actually think that people are upset. Well, the only people who are upset were the people who were on the gravy train. They were very upset. They were the ones who were screaming the loudest. But, uh, no, uh, kudos to Doug Ford for getting on top of that. Almost, uh, you know, hours within office, he was on top of that. And, and good for him. Ted, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thanks for having me back. My guest has been Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of IncResearch.ca, his website, CanadianInsider.com. If you have any questions for Ted or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.